Hey gang, Z-Man here. Today we got a different episode. We're going to be doing some modeling today. So I'm going to teach you how to build a building. Uh, I rate this building as an easy model to build. Uh, hopefully this is the beginning of a series of episodes where we do a lot more modeling and not just doing train reviews or operations. So here's the building we're going to build today. This is a City Classics building. There's a limited number of parts. So it's going to be pretty easy to paint and build. All right. Stay tuned, let's go build this thing. This is what we're starting with. This is the finished product. So I hope in today's video you learn how to model buildings more realistically. We're going to go over several different techniques in order to help you do this. So we can transform your buildings uh, from being very simple into looking like this with more complicated models. So like I said, this building kit doesn't have too, too much to it. You've got your facade, you've got your two sides, the rear, the roof, the instructions, and we also have an interior kit. Uh, there's also sheet styrene for the windows. So our next step is to clean up the flashing, which means little plastic leftovers that are le left on the building. However, first, let's go over some tools that you're going to need to build this building with. We have sandpaper to clean up the edges. We have some rubber bands in order to keep the building together after we glue it. The glue itself, I'm using testers, metal and plastic glue. Your hobby knives, one chisel and then one angled knife. Something to, I would normally have these to cut flashing uh, off parts, but this we're not going to really need these today. Potentially, we're going to have to use pencil and marker in order to Mark up stuff for measurements. We have our ruler or straight edge. That is just a very, very useful tool. We have a level in order to make sure it's level. level. And most importantly, we got some fuel in order to get this project done. Mmm, coffee. Next, we have a painting area. So, unfortunately, I have to paint inside today. It's pretty cold outside. Also, if you hear my burner go off, that's just the nature of the game. Uh... The house has to stay warm, so we're going to have to put up with that. But for our painting in detail, I've chosen some Tamiya paints, including this dull red, and we're going to try a new color on the facade, this pearl color. So we use spray paints in order to do big surfaces. So we're also going to do some weathering. So we got our weathering chalks, and we have brushes to put that on. That masking tape there is in order to paint different sections, just in case if we did have... Two main sections that we want to spray paint. The sponge, uh, we're going to wet that up and that's going to help weather our building with the, the pan pastels that we have. So let's look over the building pieces and check for what I call flashing or what everybody calls flashing. So there's these little leftover pieces of plastic that need to be knocked off with your hobby knife. So you just go. It's a little hard to do with the camera in front of me and you cut out the leftover flashing. We're going to check the other pieces to see if we have any other flashing to cut off. Because sometimes these models just get molded in such a way where it's a little sloppy. Okay, so here we have these hard edges. So we're going to first knock them down with our hobby knife. just to get a little bit smoother surface. And then we're going to get some fine sandpaper. And we've knocked down those edges a little bit. I don't know if that's in focus. All right, just put it on the sanding paper and sand that off. All right, we got a much better surface there. Let's see if this one's got any of that. Oh yeah, so let's go knock that off. Again, take your angled knife and just knock off that flashing. That one took a little bit of effort. And again, same process. Just sand that down. This is going to make it easier to glue. Uh, don't forget to sand the bottoms. Uh, this just makes a nice level surface. So when we put it together, it's laying level and nice and flat. 
this has an edge of brick over here, so we're not going to sand that. So let me finish up the rest of the cleaning up of this, and then we'll get over into paint. Okay, I so said we were going to get over to paint, but we also have these little bits of flashing that are going to get, get in way of the gluing. So this is where we use our chisel knife. We're just going to knock those down like so. Just knock off that excess plastic and do the same thing. Once we have these knocked off, we're going to then go sand the back surface. So we have a nice flat surface in order to paint. So this just takes a little bit of time. Uh, as you get become more skilled, you can do this quicker. Uh, if you haven't done this before, just take it slow. You know, it's not a rush. It's just, I do this because it's relaxing. So this may be a little bit of a Bob Ross moment of happy little trees. But, you know, I actually like sanding these things. So let's see if we're smooth here. Yep. So I'm going to do that to the rest of the surfaces, and then we'll get into paint. So before we get into paint, we have to come up with a plan. So we're going to make the building kind of look like this. It'll be a white pearl facade in the front. And then instead of doing this beige, we're going to use brick red because I want to show you how to get good mortar lines uh, with, a, uh, with a whitewash. So we're going to kind of make it look like this, but it's going to be a little bit different from the picture. Uh, this is a whole solid surface and a whole solid surface, and this is why we use spray paint. So I'm choosing to use this dull red by Tommy a color. So we're going to paint the surfaces, you know, the sides and the rear this color. And then we're going to paint the front in this pearl color. So that'll be just one shot. Uh, for the brick colors, you can also use commonly available paints that you get at a hardware store. Uh, this I got from, both of these I actually got from Home Depot. They work great uh, on plastic and resin surfaces. It's not going to harm it. Uh, you just got to make sure your paints aren't, you got to test them out before you spray the surface, you potentially melt the model, or I'm spraying on foam. Sometimes I've had the foam melt. So we'll put those back because we're using hobby paint today. And lastly, for the roof, we're going to be using, again, commonly available paint. Now, if I use this for my wooden coal stove. However, this works great for painting roofs if you want that tar effect or a dark roof. Uh, another option is you can paint it gray. Uh, gray also looks good on a roof, but we're going to go with this high heat black dull paint today. So, all right, let's go move on to paint. Okay, gang, we're going to break this up into sections, so this has the most surface area to paint. We're going to paint the, the sections separately so we don't cross-contaminate our painted sections with potential overspray. So let's get this paint rattled up, ready, ready to go. And then we're just going to paint these large surfaces. Now, it doesn't take too much paint. Just paint. You don't have to do that. It's actually more effective and economical to do this in order to get it covered. So like I said, this is a really nice brick red. I, I just love this, this dull red by Tamiya. So as we spray, there's a couple of sections that have brick on the side. So we're going to move these slightly apart. And then go paint those sides so we don't have a blank section and we don't make any mistakes. Okay, that should be good. Let's give it about 20 minutes to go dry, uh, 20, 30 minutes. I live out west, so it's pretty dry out here. And this will this will dry pretty quickly. Okay, gang. Now that we got the two sides and the rear painted, we're gonna let this continue to dry. So I'm gonna go on, go and move this off, and then get the the front ready to go paint. Okay, so let's go paint the front. Uh, this is a new color for me. We're gonna see how it comes out. If it doesn't work out, uh, we're gonna have to let it dry, and then I'll have to spray it in another color. But I think this is the color that I want. And like I said, it's got to be a plan. 
uh, before you paint, hey, what do you, what, how do you want to paint these sides and how do you want it to look? So just think about that. That's all uh, on you to think about. But let me go quick paint this. All right, I'm liking this color. Like I said, you gotta remember to paint the sides. And because we have more surfaces here, and all the detail, make sure to paint from every single angle that you can. All right, that's looking pretty good. So let's give it another 20, 30 minutes for this to go dry and then we'll go paint the roof. So in that time, uh, do something else. Go cook, play with the kids, hug a cat or dog. Uh, you don't have to wait and just look at the paint dry, literally. So I'll see you next at the roof painting section. Okay, so let's get this roof painted and we're gonna let that dry and I'll explain something else uh, that we have to paint. Let me just knock this out real quick. All right, we got a nice solid color. That's done, done being painted. So on these sections, you can see that we're gonna have an exposed surface along the top once we put this roof in. So we're gonna paint this the same color as we have the exterior. This is looking pretty good. So we're going to just paint that top so we don't have like bare plastic showing in our model. We want to, want to make this look good. So that's one of those considerations you have to think about. You may not just have to paint the front surface. You may have to paint a little bit of the top to take care of the roof line. Okay, let's go take care of those potentially exposed surfaces along the roof. We don't want those to show like I said. So we have our model looking good. So I'm not going to paint too much of this. As you can see, there's these little things here, these little plastic things. I didn't cut those because those are our roof supports. So we're just going to paint over to make sure we got a good looking model. Now we're going to do the same thing with the front. This is going to stick really high up, and if we leave that bare, it's going to show. So let's get that top spray painted. Okay, so we're going to let that dry, and then we're going to start doing the fine detailing uh, where we want to paint along the windows and also other surfaces that have detail, kind of like the picture that we saw uh, from, from the packaging. Okay, so now it's time to do the fine painting. Uh, we're going to have to do this with brushes, but first we have to look at our picture. I know that we painted the side a brick color. That's for me to show you how to do a mortar wash on the building. But we can see that there's little green details in here. I won't be able to paint these on camera, but we're going to paint these in an olive drab. A uh, very common uh, paint for the period. This building is a, like a circa 1920s building. So this is a tile front, and some of the tile sections have paint in them. Uh, moving on to the sides that have windows, we can see that there's little concrete window sills here so we're going to paint that with a gull gray as they call it by testers it's a, it comes out to a pretty pretty good concrete color uh, we can see that this is still brick so we're going to leave that alone we're going to paint the window sills green on both the front and back and as well as uh, there's also side windows and then we're also going to do the doors in green uh, we have white paint, just in case we make any mistakes on the front. We also have red paint, the same same color as what we spray painted, just in case you know we don't color in between the lines and you made a little mistake. You can still recover as long as you got matching paint. But you know, let's go talk about paintbrush sizes. So for the door, we can use a little bit wider paintbrush in order to paint this, and then move into a finer brush in order to paint in the corners. And then we're gonna use the very, very fine brush 
in order to get inside here to get that green. Like I said, I won't be able to paint this on camera uh, just because you know, the, ca the camera's just getting in the way. Uh, but I will paint some sections so you can see what I'm doing. So before I get into painting, you have to make sure that our paints are well mixed. As you can see, there's a lot of uh, liquid up here, that acrylic. So you're just going to have to mix it up. Use a Q-tip. They're cheap. Uh, it's kind of like a mini paint stick. So you're just going to mix that up good. And then I'm going to paint the front. Uh, I'm going to do that off camera because it's a fine detail and the camera's getting in the way. Uh, you're just going to mix this up, make sure it comes out even, because if you don't mix it up, this stuff is extra thick and it's going to look bad, uh, especially if it's unmixed and you got all the acrylic in the background. You could get two different colors, so just make sure to mix this up real good. Okay, I know I've kept most of the painting uh, off camera because this is fine work. Uh, when I was painting the green... Uh, because these are low details, uh, we kind of hit uh, the high details where they're supposed to be white. So I went back over with a fine Q-tip and the white paint and just splotched in the white details going all the way up. I didn't really have a problem with the top, but these little dots over here just need a quick little boop with white paint. And as you can see, painting's an illusion. So when you look at it from three foot away, this is looking pretty good. We're going to continue to uh, clean up the details uh, to make it to where I want, you know, want it to be. But it should look good once I'm done uh, with the finished details here. Another thing is weathering uh, can hide some of the mistakes. But... You know, as you're doing patchwork uh, where you overpainted, make sure you're using the same paint color that you used uh, when you paint painted the main surface. Okay, so now that we got the facade done, I'm going to tell you what I did. Uh, this took some fine painting, so it just needed to be off camera. But you can see the facade looks pretty close to what our picture looks like. So what I did is with the fine painting, I took a finer brush than this and I painted the inside of the windows by turning it to get a better paint angle. Just paint, 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 turn, paint, 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 turn, paint, paint, paint. Repeat the process. For these, because these little dots here were so close together, I painted over that high detail. And then in the last section, I told you I just went over with that Q-tip and then popped a little paint on. And popped a little paint on. Which is the same thing for lower down here, where uh, I painted over green over here on the high points. And then went back over and painted it in white. So now at least we have some contrast to our paint and our building's looking pretty sharp. I'm going to paint the next section off camera which is the rear and sides. So we're going to paint these green on the inside. We're going to paint up top here at the concrete portions a gray color to symbolize concrete. And then we're going to paint the doors green. All right. After this, after I'm done with these fine details, we'll go over and do brick wash. So the brick wash is also going to act as an aging effect. So really good section. Stick around. Okay, so we got the uh, the sides painted up. Uh, like I said, uh, I was going to paint these in a gray to symbolize concrete. This in a green to match the windows. Uh, but I want to talk talk about a few other things, and that's making mistakes. Mistakes are going to happen. So, as I was painting these window sills here in cornices, uh, we had a little bit of a mistake down here, so I just went over with the red paint and covered that up. So, like I said, you got to have a paint that matches, uh, just in case you do make a mistake. You can paint over it, and it's not that bad. 
So when you're painting, you want to work from low details to high details, uh, just so you don't have any spillage. Uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that this has a cornice that also needed to be painted in gray. So the next step is the brick wash. So let's talk about the brick wash. So this is my brick wash over here, which is made of white paint and paint thinner. So the ratio you're looking for is one to eight. So one part paint to eight, par eight parts paint thinner. Let's move these over here. And this is already pre-mixed, but it's watery right now. That's just how it stays. So we're gonna shake it up, shake it up some more. Make sure it's really good and shaken up. So it looks like we don't have too much on the bottom. Then we're gonna open it up. So there's this cap here. If you don't have it, the paint thinner tends to tends to dry out. Before you start touching your main building, what you want to do is with a wide brush and a spare piece of brick, you want to test your wash. So you're just going to hit it and you're going to let it let it drip down. As you can see, you can start to see the come on get in focus. You can start to see that we got brick lines now, which is the effect that we want. So this video isn't too long. I'm going to paint one section so you can see the effect. So you're going to hold up your brick on an angle. And I'm going to paint this side first. And we're going to start from the top. And we're just going to let it run down. Now make sure you go from the top to the bottom. And just let it run down. So as we're doing this and it's running down, it's filling in the brick lines. If you got spots where it's too where you've got too much white paint you can just brush it off real quick and you just continue on down the line I really like this technique it's kind of magical to watch your brick lines finally show up and this is all about taking your model to the next level we could have accepted the way that this was painted before and just built the building but we want a little bit more out of our models. So, you know, just go back, put a little bit more on until you get the desired effect that you're looking for. And like I said, just keep that at an angle. You see that you got some excess here. Just brush that off and continue to let it just drip on down. Just take your brush, you gotta work fast. You're gonna get this beautiful, beautiful effect. With your brick. We also gotta remember that there's a side here that's also neat that also needs to be mortared. So you can see we got nice brick lines, a couple of white spots up here. I just brush that out. All right, we're looking pretty good, so I'm gonna work on the rest of the sides and then I'll show you what the finished product looks like. Okay, we got the sides painted up. I just wanted to show it off to you. We have a little bit of like fuzz on here that we can scrape off with our hands. Another thing you can do to get back some of that color in the brick is just to take your finger and thumb and just brush across and you'll get some of that relief back. Uh, if it is too much, you can always hit it again with uh, the brick wash and the biggest thing now is just to let it dry so we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna go into weathering so you see some color variations in here that's caused by the paint thinner and that's actually natural uh, especially to these older buildings uh, and like I said the, the brick wash is a is also an aging effect like over here where we had that mistake and this is a little bit darker. Hey, let's say that was a, a repair that looks realistic. So we can keep that and it looks good. So we're going to let this dry and then we'll get on to pan pastels. And I'll show you the technique of how I weather.
Okay, so now that we got the sides painted up uh, with the brick wash, we can see it looks a lot more realistic. It looks more like a building uh, than just with, you know, the red paint. So our next step is to go and weather it. So we're going to grab our weathering brushes and we're going to grab our pan pastels. I'm going to move this side out of the way and this side out of the way because I want to show you weathering uh, with some of the details in there, like the windows. So let's move this to the side and open this up. So pan pastels are dust. Uh, there's several different colors. We're not going to need the rust today. We're not uh, doing a, a vehicle or rolling stock. So we're going to mostly pay attention to these colors. We're not going to use earth. We're going to use more of these colors, the whites, the grays. This isn't an industrial building, so we don't really, really need to use the black. So what I model is pre-1960. So in that time, there's a lot of air pollution, like China levels of air pollution, uh, and it tends to hang on the buildings. So we got to remember with weathering that rain goes from top to bottom. So that's the way we're going to weather so let's go grab this medium gray, dust up the brush, and then pop it along the top. Also, underneath windowsills tend to gather dirt. So we're going to put a little dirt there using this gray. Now we're going to splotch a couple of sections, and then we're going to switch and use a lighter color because it's going to get less dirty as we go down. I'm going to go over here, just hit that a little bit, hit it. Now this is where we need a moist sponge. Right now this doesn't look like anything, but we're going to drag down like a weather, like a rain effect. If you got a little too much, rub to the side. And just bring it down. And just bring it down. So the rain is bringing down all of our soot. And the building's getting dirty as we go. So if we miss an area, let's grab a little bit more and then stroke down. Another thing you want to do is to grab a dry paper towel and just rub on into it. This will get back some of the brick color. Now, I did this side a little heavy just to show you a heavy weathering effect. Uh, you can always make it a little bit lighter by bringing in a little more water, streaking it to the side, mixing it up, and then streaking it down, like so. And like I said, same thing, just rub in, streak down, rub in, streak down. And we're going to get a nice effect. So that's going to look good. Uh, I'm going to go work on the other sides and show you what the finished product looks like. So another thing you can do if you think you've hit an area too hard is to use the spongy, uh, the scrubber side of the sponge. And just scrub in and then drag down. This is going to get, get you more of that water effect where you got streaks of weathering. And then again, just dry it off. All right, we're looking pretty good there. I also did these sides. So like up here, a little too heavy. Just scour it a little bit and drag down. Scour and drag down. And you're going to get that drip down effect. So weathering the front, 
Uh, people tend to clean the front of their buildings and didn't care about the sides and rears. So we're just going to take our sponge that already has dirt on it and just streak it down. This is where we can use a lighter color because this is white. If I use gray, this building will turn black or gray. So we're going to use a little bit lighter color. Just dress up the front here. Hitting the high details because that's where the dirt's going to collect first. And then we can just streak it on down. Like I said, you can use the scour side. They'll give you a little bit more of that rain effect. And you're just going to scour it. Hit a couple more areas. And streak. Like I said, don't forget to dry. So this doesn't look like a brightly painted colored building anymore. It looks something more like in the real world. Uh, and this is what we're going for the effect of, you know, with aging. Uh, our brick wash, the first thing we put on, gave kind of like a bleaching effect that the sun would do, as well as put the, the mortar lines into the brick. However, these pan pastels give you the dirt, the earth, the rust. It gives you that effect. So with that, uh, I'm going to let this dry out, and then we're going to put windows on. Okay, so now that we have the building weathered, we got some of that dirt in there where it doesn't look like a clean new building anymore. We're going to start adding the windows with this clear sheet styrene. So you flip over the wall, and to save yourself time, I would just cut the glass, uh, or what's going to become the glass, along the edges. Do this all in one piece. Uh, when you glue this together, you could get a mess uh, that could cloud up your windows. So with as many windows as we have here, I like to just use one piece. So I'm going to mark out where exactly I want the glass. And we can save some sheet styrene for later. But this should be enough to glue down here, so we're going to mark up here where we want to cut. And then mark here on the side where we want to cut. Now you can do this with a knife, but I also have a paper cutter. So I'm going to cut the glass with a paper cutter with the marks that we have. Okay, so now with our paper cutter, we're going to line up the marks that we have. Like this one over here with the blade of the paper cutter and we're going to cut. We're going to line up the next line. There's the line. And then we're going to cut. Now this paper cutter is getting a little dull so I'm just going to cut the rest of this here. Snap that off. Bring this over here. And there we go. Now we can glue this on. Okay, so now that we got our big sheet of sheet styrene cut, we can start to apply a little bit of glue, not too much, using our needle point. Just get along the edges, bring that up, come across, come down. The other thing about using just one big, one big sheet is that sometimes glue dries and your windows fall off, which gets really annoying. I used to apply them separately uh, in this application, but I found out that just using a bigger piece of sheet styrene gets a better effect. So we're going to slowly put that down so we don't have any smudges. Walk our fingers along and press down on the glue. 
And this is so we make sure we don't get glue inside the windows and we have nice clear windows. A little dirt there, but that'll come off. So we got our windows on. I'm going to work on the rest of the sides and then we're going to put the building together. So this is going to be a little tricky to get on camera, but the assembly of the building goes like this. There's these taller sides here. They go on the front like that. The rear that has flat edges sandwiches in between the two sides. So we don't have to be too sparing with the glue uh, because we want a good hold. So I'm going to take off the fine needle and I am going to come down on the edge almost to the top and just get glue on this. We want quite a bit because we want a good hold. So once we get these all these sides up, this is where our rubber bands are going to come into play. Uh, we're going to stand the building up and I'll do the far side first where you contact it with the glue like so. And you just hold it until it sticks. And then you want to get the other side. Squeeze it and hold it till it sticks. And then we're going to work on the rear here. Let me go glue that and then we'll stick it together. So with this, because it's going on the inside, we need to glue this, this, this outer edge. I'm just going to get the glue on. Got to turn it around. And I got to glue the other edge. Put that down. Close up the glue so it doesn't leak. And then we're going to sandwich this in between our two side walls. Making sure to line it up. If you got excess glue, just rub it off. Remember it is contact cement, so it can potentially make a mess. Always have a paper towel handy. But this is coming together. So we're gonna take the rubber band Go around, go to the bottom, take another rubber band, put it in the middle, raise that up, get it even, and then lastly, put the last rubber band up on top. So let me go switch the camera angle again, I've got that together and a fashion that was the best that I can do on camera. And we're just going to make sure that our sides are nice and even. Spinning the building around. Cleaning off excess glue. So you may have to go like that to get the inner edges even. Put your hand in. It's, it gets a little tougher with uh, four more story buildings to put this together. But, all shazam. This building is together. So we have our roof material, but you're gonna notice it. you gotta cut it to fit it. So, we're gonna grab our pencil, and we're gonna mark off on the inner edge where we need to cut. I'll do the cutting off camera and then we'll put the roof on. Okay, I've done the cutting off camera, so let's go fit the roof. And because we marked from the inner edge, we got a nice tight fit. Let me back this up, so now we actually have a roof on there. Now, a little bit of a thumb mark, uh, I can take that out with some extra paint. 
or in the future I can get some roof details, put a chimney up there, that'll hide it. Uh, but this building probably needs some more built, uh, roof details. Uh, you can also go crazy with yourself and put down downspouts, uh, but those are additional parts. So this building's together. Let me get the rubber bands off and show you what it looks like on the layout. So here is the final product. Here's a couple of views from the front, the sides, and the rear. Okay, everybody. Here's the new building that we constructed on the layout. So here's the front look of it. Let's zoom in towards the front. And you can see it's looking pretty good. I'm going to move the camera down so you can get a side-on angle of how our building's looking. And it really looks good with that two-story building right next to it because uh, the first set of windows is three, three stories up on the side. If you enjoyed today's content, be sure to like and subscribe. The more subscribers I have, uh, the more views we get. And I really want to show a lot more modeling techniques in the future and not just uh, operations and, uh, you know, like new train videos. So I really enjoy modeling. Uh, this model was a little bit more challenging uh, because I filmed it on camera. Normally, I can assembly, assemble one of these in about two hours. Uh, today, it took about four because I had to think about cam camera shots. But if you found anything helpful, uh, leave a comment down below, and I do appreciate your feedback. Until next time, take care, gang.